Let's play Nimka. Never played before. The first sub challenge. We'll have a, a chill 10 minute rapid game. We'll try and be instructive here. We'll play E4. Opponent rated. Oh, we have played before. We've played three times before. So opponent rated just over 2,000. Wasn't the world supposed to end in 2012? There was that one movie. Ooh, okay, Ponziani time. So d5 is one of the, the best, most challenging moves against Ponziani. And the move to play here is queen a4. Um, the benefit to d5 is if I were to take, queen takes, I don't have knight c3. But after queen a4, things get tricky. It's a tricky position if black hasn't seen this before. It's not easy to figure out what to do if you don't know the main line. Because I'm pinning the knight. There's still pressure against both pawns. Bishop d7 breaks the pin, but obstructs the queen from defending d5. Um, now this is playable. This is a gambit, but I am um, going up a pawn. Thank you, Midnight JS. Yeah, it's after midnight for me. It's 12.53 a.m. The week is just beginning. It's Monday for me. And probably for most other people, too. Um, yeah, so knight d4 uh, attacked my queen. Move all the way back to support the knight. Actually, I went through a phase of playing this as black against Ponziani. There are some interesting ideas, but... Um, White is supposed to be a bit better here, at least according to the engine. I remember looking this up with Stockfish a few years ago. And John, welcome back, John, gifting to CL Smith. Shout out to CL Smith and shout out to John. Do we have a John command? I think we do. Oh, the John command links to John Bartholomew? Wait, what? Well, shout out to 95 Horatio. There we go. Okay, so yeah, this is a move. Hitting my queen. If I play queen g3, it can get weird because bishop d6, I win the pawn. I run into rook g8. I don't think I want to deal with that. So queen e2 might be the more solid approach. Pinning the e pawn. Preparing to play d3. Yeah, d3 looks attractive now. Because on one hand, this pawn, it can be a strength controlling space, but in this case, it looks more of a weakness. Well, there are still some interesting lines. I think I'll, I'll go ahead and take. Because um, black could take back. And Castling actually defended the pawn with tactics, because if takes, I can't take back his rookie eight. Black's probably choosing between takes first or rookie eight first. Both moves are interesting. When do I sleep? I sleep when I'm not awake. Okay, bishop e3 looks reasonable. I'm actually not sure if I want to castle kingside or queenside. There's some debate where the king is safest. And black is actually probably more prepared to attack on the king's side. So I might stay flexible. Knight d2 looks natural. Only real developing square for the knight. And the main goal is just to be solid. Like, I'm up a pawn. I don't need to go crazy. I just want to... Complete development, simplify, not get mated or brutally attacked. How do you do arrows? Arrows, it's just a matter of right-clicking and dragging. You can't do them on mobile. You need a, a mouse. And if you have a keyboard, then you can hold down shift and make them different colors, combination of shift and alt. Apologies to those who are colorblind. Have I ever been to any African country? 
Yeah, I went to Senegal back in 2019. Um, but that's the only African country I've been to. Chen's immense. I still don't know what that means. What does that mean? Welcome back, Daniel Newman Chess, who donated. There were a few Chen's immense donations in a recent stream. Yeah, I think I want a castle queenside here. Actually, I'm not sure. I mean, this also looks fine. This is actually hard. I guess castling, there's queen here. If I castle queenside, it gets a bit sharper. But then I can, can launch an attack of my own. Let's castle queenside. Very possible back will start storming in, uh, in various ways with the pawns. Another move to consider is queen d4, just going for a queen trade. The trading queens would simplify a lot of uh, a lot of things. Alexa, what does Chen's amends mean? Winnie Okola, known professionally as Kenza, is a Canadian singer, record producer, and music video director Wait, from Vancouver. No, that's British not what I said. Columbia. Alexa, quiet. It was telling me who Kenza is. Also, F4? Also, okay, first question is, what is Black trying to do? Does this move, it just stares at my very solid mini pawn chain. Um, the queen, queen wants to like swing over, but it can't because I'm controlling all these squares. So F4 would just kick the bishop back and it gives me some initiative. I might first look to optimize my my rook. Could also go for the trades. F4 is a bit committal though. Cause then I can't move like I can't move backwards to F3. And there's cases where I want the pawn on F3 to just restrict the light squared bishop. So Yeah, I'm thinking rook here, which is more more flexible. I'm not scared of this, even though maybe that's what Bobby Fischer would do. And bishop g4, then I play f3. I think the plan is to play f4, bishop d6, and then... Oh, bishop d4, there's queen f4. I guess I just eventually want to trade the rooks on the e-file. Maybe some idea of bishop g5, f4. There is a small trap if rook ad8, I play bishop g5 and skewer. Maybe one, one slow plan is to play h3, just controlling this, preparing g4, and, and then get the pawns rolling, like f4, g4. F4 comes with tempo. Ooh, B5. Okay, now question, where, do, where does my bishop move? This is natural, but then it could get hit again. So I'm thinking this is probably a bit better. Bishop D3. I guess then Queen A6. And King B1. B4, C4. Actually, B4, the queen would hang. So bishop d3, if b4 immediately... And maybe I just take it. Do this. Oh, an RMT cheering 200 saying, are you feeling in a Ponziani mood tonight? Uh, Yeah, I guess a Ponziani describes my mood. Describes the opening in this game. For those just joining, this is uh, an interesting line in Ponziani. One upon early. I'm trying to hold on to it. Want to start the stream with a clean game. Okay, so now there's some tension between the bishops. Um, I mean, trading. Move like trading and then queen d3. I'm not employing my usual like a crazy aggressive gambit style 
Because my opponent's basically the one who gathers the pawn. So I'm just trying to be controlled, be solid. Oh no, my pawn. I should note, if, if black takes, I play g3, um, essentially trapping the bishop, and then rook h1 would win the bishop. Now, one principle, I've mentioned this before on previous streams, but when you have an endgame of bishops of the same color, regardless of rooks, if rooks are on the board or not, um, both players, in this case, should put their pawns on light squares. Oh, unless the bishops get traded, which I probably don't mind. I was thinking this, but that just loses our rook because my bishop would be pinned. So maybe g3. Or maybe king d2. King d2 actually looks better. Yeah, bishops are traded, then the color of the squares that the pawns are on are less relevant. Um, and what's more relevant is king safety or king king activity king safety less relevant when there's just a, a rook ending casual or rated i don't mind usually when i do viewer challenges uh viewers can decide if they want uh want the game to be rated whoa it's minlay what's up minlay gm minlay you're just in time for a king pawn ending. Shout out to Min Lei. I think we have a min command. So we just traded everything except the kings and the pawns. Um, and because I'm up a pawn, this is, I don't even really need to calculate. This is a, a pretty routine win, um, especially because my king is more active. I have one nice kind of, or two nice healthy pawn islands. And now we'll see how to how to win in the end game when you're up just a single pawn. Um, and the goal goal really is to create a pass pawn on the side in which I have the majority. So I have four on three. Um, so the plan is just to start advancing. You see four, c five. Yeah, how many people would feel confident? winning this as white against a strong player. So I feel like this this sort of end game, it's a good exercise. Like if you're if you're a decent end game player, you should be able to like beat a grand master from this position as white. But could depend on time and nerves and etc. Okay, so now I have a few options. Um I'm gonna start with C5 kick the king away and then then I can decide between either playing d6 or taking both moves should be winning um I think what I'll do is take even though d6 looks really just crushing um then my my it's hard for my king to get in um I wouldn't want to have a situation where like my king can't enter and then I can't make progress but when I take, then already envisioning some Zugzwang where whenever the king moves back, I'll be able to move forward and then start making progress. So black's gonna try and make waiting moves with the pawns. Eventually the pawn moves will run out. Actually, if f6, I have king e5, so I don't even need to um, to make more pawn moves. There's one last note of a5, just a3 is simple. Um, I'll play g3. There's actually, there is a, a kind of interesting way of winning this position, which, uh, opponent might resign, so we might not see it, but... I could have just gone in, taken the pawn, and, and won, like, eventually with queening on the king's side. But I do want to illustrate um, one winning technique, which actually Hi, might Eric. be the most efficient I way to win. I think you will like this small chess puzzle. White to move mate oh. in five. 
White KC5 NE6 C7 wait. E5 F6 Black KC8 F7. Wait, 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 wait. I need to I need to take it one one position at a time. Oh, black actually okay. <laughs> After the game, I'll I'll share what uh what line I was thinking of. Um a black allowed me to queen the C pawn. There is a line where I I would queen with mate. Okay, so this is not stalemate because this pawn has three legal moves, and that's mate. Okay, so that was that was actually a pretty instructive game. To start the stream, it was a Ponziani, uh, kind of tricky opening with queen a four. I won a pawn early. Black didn't get so much compensation. Um, the mistakes for Black were a bit more subtle. Like trading all the rooks was probably one of the, the biggest mistakes. Um, when you're Black in this position, you should really try and keep at least one rook on the board. Like takes takes and then king f8 is a, a better way to resist. But it's still, it's still probably very close to winning for white. Um, oh, so the line I wanted to, to show, because it's typical in, in king pawn endings, if king c8, I wouldn't be queening my, my c pawn, but oh, I would no essentially put the king schedule. in stalemate. Oh, yes, your sleep schedule. Yeah, it's 1 a.m. for me, probably a weird time for some other viewers too. Um, so the king has no moves, but the pawn has a move. And after I take this pawn has a move, and then I can could promote to a rook with mate <laughs> for the style points. So anyway, that's kind of what I was going for. One more thing, if we go back to the opening, the main line here, and actually the best move, like the main line theory here, it's not an easy move to play if you're not familiar with it, but it is to play f6. Maybe it is easy to play if you just follow the rule, always play f6. Because um, it's the most effective way to defend the e-pawn. Other moves like this or this, they defend e5, but um, they lose d5. So f6, and then I think this is a mainline bishop here attacking the knight, and then knight e7. So it's a little bit awkward for black, but... Um, it is a reputable line if you know it well. Anyway, so I'll probably put that on YouTube. Uh, I know YouTube likes Ponziani content, I think. Hopefully Twitch does too. So another another Ponziani video for the YouTube channel. Twitch chat may be saying hi to YouTube. YouTube, say hi to Twitch chat. If you have Prime, you can subscribe for free. Or you can gift subs 